When it comes to complaints about the Nintendo Switch, one of the really big ones to come from traditional gamers is the lack of a D-pad on the Joy-Con. But there is now an official solution to this with Hori's D-pad Joy-Con replacement. This is something that has been out in Japan for a little while. It was having a few problems when it was first released. It would soak up a ton of battery from the Switch itself, but that has been switched with the latest Switch firmware, and now it's made its way to the States in an awesome little Zelda design and a Mario design as well. However, while this is the first official way to get a D-pad for your Switch, this is not the only option out there, and there's actually a much older one that we've done before on this channel, and that's making your own modded Joy-Con with a D-pad. So we're gonna compare the benefits and weaknesses of both of these and which one's actually worth getting. Round one, fight! First, let's talk about what exactly you're getting with this Hori D-pad Joy-Con. Now, this is an officially released Joy-Con. It's half the price of an actual Joy-Con and has the benefit of adding this little D-pad here, but there is a lot of stuff it sacrifices. First off, it has no internal battery. Batteries not included. And no Bluetooth connection. This cannot be used on its own. You can't use it wirelessly. You can't use it sideways. It is only meant to be connected directly to the Switch when you're playing in portable mode. And as a direct result of it missing all that tech inside, it is considerably lighter than regular Joy-Con. You might actually even think it's fake or non-functional when you very first pick it up because there's just nothing in here. It also doesn't have the rumble battery or gyroscope. So it is the bare bones basics that you need to have a functioning controller. And in fact, when I actually first opened this, I was really confused for a moment because I was just checking it out, looking at the buttons, and I was like, oh, that's weird. It doesn't have any shoulder buttons. It doesn't have any wireless connection. There's no point. It's only used on the side, so there'd be no reason for those. Uh, now, for how this works compared to using a traditional Joy-Con, it's actually fairly close in a lot of areas. Like I said, it is a lot lighter, which can throw you off a little bit, but you don't notice it as much while it's connected to the system. Uh, the stick feels pretty much identical to the one on traditional Joy-Cons. Shoulder buttons feel great. The only areas where you really notice a difference are the minus button, the screen capture button, and then obviously the D-pad. The minus and screen capture buttons have a little more softer. They don't have the same kind of satisfying click that the traditional Joy-Cons have. And then the D-pad doesn't have the snappy button feeling at all because the Joy-Cons have actual buttons. It's much softer and feels much more akin to like an old school SNES controller. So when it comes to just being used as a substitute for a regular Joy-Con when you're using your Switch in handheld, it actually does the job really well. It fits in really seamlessly, and since it doesn't have that battery problem anymore, it's pretty awesome. There's just one major problem I have with it, and it's actually this little raised bump right here. So where the release button is, there's a different shell shape, and at first glance you might think, oh, that's kind of weird, but whatever, it's not a big deal, right? The problem is, especially when you're using a Switch in portable mode, something we've been talking about a lot lately is that it's great to buy a grip to use with your Switch in portable mode, but because of this little groove right here, most traditional grips are not going to fit your Switch anymore because the grip doesn't actually fit over the controller, it causes buttons to be misaligned, and the whole thing just ends up being really awkward and weird. That aside though, if you just like using your Switch straight up and you're not using any kind of grip or attachments or anything, this is actually a pretty awesome little upgrade. And I do love the visual look of it too. When they originally released it in Japan, it was just this straight blue look, but in the US releases, they've done this Zelda one and Amari one that as well that look really, really nice. I actually kind of wish we had an official Joy-Con that had designed kind of like this. So for 25 bucks, this is actually a pretty cool little replacement, but the question here is how does it compare to something that's even cheaper and just requires a little elbow grease on your own part? So just as a quick refresher on how easy or maybe actually how hard it is to do a shell exchange, uh, we're gonna do a fresh one right now. This is actually the first Joy-Con we ever did a shell mod on where we added this white one. We're gonna take this one and replace it with another white shell, but one that has the D-pad. So let's get at it right now. I don't break a Joy-Con.
So that actually went pretty smoothly, and as a result, we now have a fully functional left Joy-Con that has the D-pad. So unlike the Hori one, this has wireless connection, gyroscope, rumble, all those awesome features, and you can still use it on its own sideways if you wanted to, although that is a little awkward with the D-pad right here. And all of this comes at arguably the cheaper price point of $15 for the left shell D-pad by itself. Now, of course, the reason this is arguable is because while the shell is cheaper than the Hori D-pad, you are also going to have to take a Joy-Con you already own and convert it into this design. So if you don't already have an extra Joy-Con, you're going to have to take the only left Joy-Con you have and turn it into this, which can be awkward for scenarios like I was saying, where if you want to use it sideways like this. Cost breakdown. And then there, of course, there is also the very real issue of if something goes wrong when you're doing that conversion process. I mean, what we did just now worked out fine, but that's also because I've done this a few times and I'm starting to get the rhythm for it. Anyone who's doing their shell exchange for the very first time really does run the risk of possibly snapping a cable, not plugging something in right, maybe messing up how certain buttons are laid out, and can be a lot of effort that could end up turning into, well, nothing. By the way, if you like the idea of having a white Joy-Con, but you don't want to run the risk of accidentally destroying one that you own, a great, easy, and affordable solution for it is today's spon- uh, Is today's sponsor dbrand, blah, blah, blah. They've made a whole line of different Switch skins that are totally safe to use for your Joy-Cons, the Switch itself, or even for the dock. You can get them in an awesome white design like this, or in a variety of colors, and even special ones like carbon fiber. If you're interested and you want to grab any, check out the link down below. Now, we've already talked about a lot of the in-depth ups and downs of these different methods of getting a D-pad. There's still one very important comparison to have, and that's just what the experience is like using each of them. Because while the shell replacement has all the benefits of still being used wirelessly and all that kind of stuff, as far as it goes just using either of these attached to your Switch in portable mode, the experiences are very similar except for how those D-pads differ. Uh, starting with the Zelda Hori one, like I was saying earlier, the D-pad on this one is a little softer. It feels a lot closer to using like an old school control which on the one hand can feel a little familiar and comfortable, especially if you still play a lot of old school gaming systems. I mean, this feels like I'm going back to using like an SNES controller, but at the same time, I'm not sure if it's still the best way to go because it works well for things like rolling motions, uh, but it doesn't have the same kind of satisfying feedback they can get with the official Joy-Con. So let's actually switch to that shell replacement right now and see how those differ. So with the shell replacement, you're still using the same kind of underlying buttons that the uh, regular Joy-Cons would have. It's just that instead of them being contacted by four separate little buttons, it's this one D-pad that's just hitting each of them. So you're getting that same kind of kind of clicky feeling you get when you hit each side of the D-pad. And honestly, that's something that I've really grown to like with this design. It's not exactly traditional, but I actually find it to be functionally a little better. And if you do end up wanting to use the Joy-Con sideways for whatever reason, it can still at least work kind of like you're hitting those four buttons because you're getting that clear feel that you're hitting each one. So in the end, I gotta say that while the Hori D-pad controller is a great option that's gonna work right out of the box and at, I think, a fair price, if you're willing to put the work in and you have the confidence you're not gonna accidentally break anything, the shell replacement is the much better method to go with. You're gonna get the better D-pad, in my opinion, and not to mention the fact that you're still gonna get the full functionality of a left Joy-Con that you can use wirelessly.